Hello, and welcome to this Kistler webinar. My name is Matthew, and I will be your Global Spec moderator, and I want to review a few housekeeping items with you before we begin. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the operation of the user interface for today's webinar. The large window with the heading presentation in the upper left is the primary window for today's session. Just to the right of the main presentation window is the speaker bio window with background information on today's presenters. Just below that is the Q&A window. At any time during the presentation, you can enter a question into the box in the lower section of the window and click Submit. Your question will be placed in the queue to address when we get to the Q&A session. At the bottom of your screen, you will see additional buttons to enhance your webinar experience. To see what a particular button does, just place your mouse pointer over it and a tooltip will appear with a description of the button's function. Now let me introduce today's presenters. With us today is Michael Rill, the Sales and Applications Engineer for Kistler Group, Eric Peterson, the Manager, North America Vehicle D&D for Kistler Group, and Nils Harms, the Product Manager for Kistler Group. To read more about our presenters, please look at the speaker bio window right next to the main presentation window. Guys, welcome to today's event. And with that, I will pass things along to you to get started. Hello, Mike Ryle here from Kistler Instruments. Today, we'll review some new technologies and how to simplify RLDA testing with wireless wheel force transducers and robots. Here in the US, we have myself, Mike Ryle. I'm a sales and application engineer focused in the vehicle dynamics and durability areas here at Kistler. And then we have Eric Peterson, sales manager for vehicle dynamics and durability. Also, we'll be bringing in our product manager from Sindelfing in Germany to speak. We'll go over who Kistler is in a brief intro. And then we'll also discuss our new wireless wheel force sensors for durability testing, along with a unique application using steering and pedal robots for durability testing. Kistler is a worldwide company. However, most of our dynamics and durability sensors come from Sindelfing in Germany. Uh, personally, we're located just outside of Detroit in Novi, Michigan. Kistler has several, several areas uh, with sensor technologies, anywhere from sensors in the road on the highways to industrial process control with force uh, and pressure. And then our main area is vehicle test, and more specifically, vehicle dynamics and durability. Just in vehicle dynamics and durability alone, we have a wide range of sensor solutions for acceleration measurements, speed and slip angle, all the way to wheel forces and moments. Today, our main focus will be wheel force transducers, along with the steering and pedal robots. With that, Niels Harms will take over and discuss our new wireless wheel force transducers. Welcome from my side. I'm Niels Harms, and I'm looking forward to introduce you today the Keywood Wireless HDR, which is simplifying your testing. I would like to quickly introduce myself. I'm the product manager for the wheel force transducer, including all the transmission and electronics. The agenda of my presentation includes the following topics. Um, in the first step, I would like to introduce you the keyword wireless. Then I um, would like to show you the different applications where you can use the keyword wireless. A system overview over the system with the differentiations um, between the keyword wireless and the keyword performance. And the key characteristic of the system and least but not least, and at least the accessories uh, and, the, and the software. I would like to give you a short overview of our applications where you can use the keyword wireless HDR. You can use it as example for the road load data acquisition, for rough testing, the signal processing unit, for up to four road, road iron wheel force transducer. And you have the possibility for multiple op 
output options. As example, CAN, OTTI, Ethernet, all of them are available. You can use them as well for the vehicle dynamics testing. The system is really easy and quick installed so that you have an, it enables the efficiency, efficient vehicle comparison. The easy connectivity to every data acquisition system. And also it's usable for tire testing and brake system optimization. It's easy and can compact setup for vehicle benchmarking. The electronic housing are also compatible to all other systems. So in general, we have a powerful wireless solution for our wheel force transducer configuration and administration. We have a flexible and user-friendly far field telemetry system. This is our new far field telemetry system for wheel force transducer. On the left side, the onboard unit type 9813C and on the right side, the wheel unit 9822A. The users of the Roda and wheel force transducer will benefit from cable-free solutions and the reduced setup time of the system. Here, the system overview of our new system. In the middle, you can see the keyword wireless unit. It's connected and can be configured and set up with, the, with a PC with our software key center. And we have different output option, analog, CAN, DTE, or Ethernet, and can be connected to your data acquisition system. Here below, the power supply, the keyboard wireless needs to be powered for, or can be powered for 9 to 28 volts. The keyboard wireless is streaming the data between the keyboard wireless wheel unit and the keyboard wireless onboard unit. There is a wireless connection between those two systems. The keyboard wireless unit is getting the data from the wheel force transducer. The system overview here shows a comparison between the keyboard wireless system on the left side and the keyboard performance on the right side. The main difference is the extension cables between the keyboard while keyword performance and the road and wheel force transducer. The extension cables but where you have to to cable or where you have to cable to every wheel will be obsolete in the future. So our aim is to set up really quick and fast without cabling because to handle the cables cables it takes normally a lot of time for the measurements. The usage of the keyword wireless HDR is in our Reforce Transducer six component wheels. Here are our portfolios for our vehicles. vehicles. They are mainly used for passenger cars. So the S625, the S630, and the S660. The reinforced one user for cars is our benefits are the modular structure, digitalization directly in the wheel, and the lightweight design with carbon fiber for the S625 and S630. A short explanation of the reinforced one user. With the reinforced one user, you can measure all three forces and the moments will be calculated through the forces. So the signal overview, the three forces and the three moments, and as well the angle and the angle speed. The angle is a really important signal because it's needed for the calculation of the moments and of FZ and FY. FX. The key characteristics of our new keyboard wireless 
is the fast installation, the wireless data transmission and the future-proofed concept. You can connect up to four wheel force wheel units to our system. The key characteristics, as I already explained, now more in detail, the fast installation, no more cabling, you can no fast installation, you can focus on the test and not on the installation. No more cabling is needed. So no cabling from the trunk to every wheel force transducer. No external antennas are required. No additional adaptations for the mounting of the stator. A user-optimized handling. We have a powerful data transmission system. Our new wireless standard uh, based on 2.4 gigahertz uh, system. Uh, encrypted uh, transmission and all four wheel units are synchronized. And we have a future-proofed DTI system. So you can connect really easily the DTE system to our DTE logger. The power data transmission synchronization in the configuration can be done really easily. It's a really true plug and measure. I would like to give you a short overview of the onboard electronic and wheel unit. What are the new features are that we have on the first step where we have the powerful Wi-Fi transmission, data transmission. So no external antennas are required. And the data transmission is encrypted. We have for the wheel unit, we have button for the IT configuration on every wheel. So we have a better handling. The idea of the wheel unit can be checked really easily. And every one second, there will be the identification via the LED. Do you have the LEDs for the identification? So you can check really easily by pushing the button as well. And as I already said, every second there will be the LED will flashing. And it's really easy to restart and to configure the wheel unit with the onboard unit. We have on the wheel unit an integrated battery with exchange. I will explain in one of the next slides how it can be easily changed. And the new feature is also the capability. So it's still given. You can use your existing Roda and wheel first transducer for the integration of the new keyboard wireless. The key characteristics, the technical details in our onboard unit 9813C1. The wireless standard, I already explained, this is the standard wireless standard. The re resolution of our system is 16 bits. And the sampling rate between the wheel unit and the onboard unit are 1000 Hertz. We have different data outputs, the CAN, analog outputs, a USB, and an Ethernet. The key characteristics of our, of our wheel unit are the operation time is between minus 20 and 60 degrees. The degree of protection is IP65. We are using a, a lithium ion battery for the power supply of the electronics. And the battery operating time is approximately five hours for plus 20 degrees, and for minus 20 degrees, still four hours operating time. Here I will show you. A short, shortly, how easy it is to exchange the battery. So you have only to push the button here and then push both buttons at the same time. Then the battery will be is unlocked, so you can remove the battery. And on the same way, you can put the battery inside 
and it will be automatically locked. It's easily to exchange after the, the battery is empty. You can remove it and you can move forward, move forward your testing. Here, a short detailed picture of our angle encoder. In the next slide, I have also pictures how it is mounted. These are two plates and they are rotating. Here, those parts will be mounted or clamped to the brake. And this part here will be mounted on the offset adapters. We have special assembly tools to bring this angle encoder in the right uh, position. Here's a picture how it looks like originally mounted on a, on a, on a, a car. So here behind is the offset adapter and with the assembly pins, you can directly mount our new wheel encoder to the offset adapter. And on the and on these um, pins, you can now mount the Wheelforce 20 user. And here on the right side, you can already see the wheel encoder is clamped on the brake. Here a more detailed uh, picture. It's clamped on both sides to the brake, like with the brake. And you can also have here different variations, how near you need to the brake, how big is your offset. We are really flexible and it's really easy to, to change it by your own. The mounting of the angle encoder takes only two minutes if everything is adjusted once. Here in comparison between the angle encoder versus the stator or, or, or other system, what is still, still, still in use. So the advantage is here, so the, you do not have to mount the, the holder of the stator. You have not to build up special mounting tools that the stator is in the correct position. For the, our new angle encoder, it's only important that you can go, that it's big enough to go over the offset adapter. But we checked a lot of hubs and no one of them is bigger than we have as our, in our standard. This accessory that can be, be we have a, that will be delivered with our Q wireless HDR is the transport case. This will be in the onboard unit for wheel units, and it's also possible to store additional batteries for a fast, fast exchange. All cables and accessories that are needed for testing are inside our transportation case. The key center software is also part of the of the delivery, you, you, we can, you can use it for the configuration of the keyboard wireless HDR, and you can also use it for all other Kistler sensors. The event log of efficiency service, you can do definition of test, text, test setups, and data acquisition as well. Here, a photo from our testing in Boxberg. The proving ground is owned by Bosch and we did a really harsh and hard testing with all possibilities that can happen to have the confidence and to be sure that our system is working probably. And as well, we performed with our with two key customers already test to, to see if the wheel encoder the transmission is working well. Here's the 
testing in Boxberg. A short overview where we, on the points, I will show you on the next slide some data, some, some screenshots, what we did and what we tested. Here's example, the, the forces, everything was recorded pretty well. And below you can see the moments of a test example. Here, the angle and the status, and also the quality of the signal in DBM. And the status is, is, is low, so zero, so no interruption, nothing happened. We are second slide of our testing on the second wheel, the forces and the moments. Here, a second test and on another wheel, also the angle. And here you can see there are some status warnings that here we have a buffer inside and of our system. Everything is transmitted and we used in this case is our buffering. Nils just reviewed some of the data from our wireless wheel force transducers. For post analysis, we also have J-Beam and more specifically a durability version. Uh, this was designed specifically for analyzing durability data that makes damage analysis um, and durability analysis in general much easier and faster. Along with the, the analysis and graph generation, it can also do automatic reporting. So you can run a report one time, set that up, save the file, and run the exact same report if you're doing several vehicles or the exact data analysis over and over again. A really simple, intuitive software. I'd be more than happy to run through a demo with anyone interested. Next, we'll move on to simplifying RLDA testing with robots. So within the last two years, we have partnered with a company called Vehico. Uh, they offer steering and pedal robot solutions. We can integrate these directly with Kistler measurement solutions um, and also provide local support around the world. So for steering robots, there's several options. Our CSB20 is a 20 Newton meter version, commonly used in ADAS applications. And then our CSB40 and 60 are higher Newton meter versions, so 40 and 60 Newton meters. Those are more commonly used for dynamics applications or durability applications, where you have to put fast inputs into the steering wheel um, and have a fast response time. And then we also have versions for heavy trucks. So our 60T and 150T would be higher rated for heavy truck applications. What's unique about the Vehico steering robots is that it can be installed directly behind the existing steering wheel. So you maintain that real steering wheel feel. You can take over as the driver and you're not modifying the existing steering setup at all. And because it installs directly behind the steering system, uh, it's really quick, less than 30 minutes to install. Uh, even if it's your, your second time installing the robot or even the first, you can walk through it in less than 30 minutes. There's no parts between the driver's face. Um, it's just the existing steering wheel there and you keep the real feel. Um, this allows the airbag control and steering wheel electronics to stay intact. Um, and it also allows it to adapt to all vehicles, even if there's shift paddles. There's several ways to control the steering wheel. Um, you can tell it to go to specific angles, or it can also take GPS inputs. There are many pre-written tests for a lot of the, the standardized tests that are out there, but you can also modify those. Uh, they leave the scripting, it's Python-based, open um, for modification. Along with that, uh, they offer a pedal robot solution. So there's singular actuators. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the CG300. So if you just need to control acceleration, um, you can just use a single robot. 
There's a multi-purpose robot that allows you to control either braking, acceleration, or even the clutch. That would be the CP800. There's a brake robot alone. So if you need really high Newton meter, high force application for the brake, that would be the best option. And then there's a combined pedal robot. This allows you to control the accelerator and braking. So it's an all-in-one solution. And then there's also a fail-safe emergency brake. Pretty useful if you're not gonna have a driver in the car and you just wanna have the ability to break the vehicle and come to a complete stop very quickly. This is not driven electronically like the rest of the pedals. It actually has a uh, hydraulic uh, application so that if the electronics fail, you can trigger that and it's a, a separate source uh, to break. Uh, the driver can always override the pedals just like the steering wheel. It's quick and easy to install and there's a wide range of control methods. You can control pedal position, force, velocity. You can control by distance of the vehicle itself, brake pressure. You can control by acceleration or deceleration values or even engine torque. Uh, there's CAN inputs on the sensor system, so you can bring in any, any kind of trigger that you need. Uh, with this and with the steering robot, you can record and replay, so you can go out and drive a profile and go out and just replay exactly what you drove. Uh, the interface with this is really intuitive. It's an online interface, so no uh, programs needed to be downloaded. You can synchronize this with your steering robot or any other uh, platforms that you may be using. And it also just uses a vehicle power supply, so you don't have to worry about extra battery packs or anything else in the vehicle. Just an example of uh, installation in a car. Uh, so you can see here on the left hand side is the Kistler measurement steering wheel. So that will give you torque and angle separate from the, the vehicle robot system. And it's integrated directly behind uh, the vehicle robot. Uh, the torque support in the right hand corner is suction cup to the windshield. This allows for a fast installation, but you still have a robust system there uh, to provide that torque support. The electronics is in the middle bottom. These are the, the control and also the computer for the robot. You connect to it with an Ethernet cable. Um, and you can use a switch for connecting to multiple robots. And then in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the pedal robot. This is the multi purpose unit, so we're controlling accelerator and braking. I mentioned briefly before, uh, so there's two main ways to control the robots. You can have open loop testing, this is where you're telling it exact angles and pedal positions to go to. Uh, typically used for something like a sign with dwell test. Um, these are all ready to run pre-written tests. There's no specific adaptations needed to the car. The robots will adapt automatically uh, with pedal and steering. And then we can also do closed loop. Uh, so for durability testing, this is where we've had quite a few uh, recent applications come up for closed loop, uh, mainly path following. So if you want to follow the exact same track over and over again, reduce driver fatigue, uh, here then you would use the, the closed loop uh, control methods. So you're, you're following either a recorded path or exact XY positioning. You can do this uh, to in low mu situations or even cause the car to drift and the robot will maintain control of the vehicle. To do this, um, to remove the driver from the loop, you would need a remote control option. Uh, so you'd have a wireless data link that allows you to control it remotely. Uh, very robust uh, and high range. Up to 1,500 meters away, you could be controlling the vehicle and have uh, emergency control. Uh, to have path following, you also need a GPS with high accuracy. Uh, so most likely you'll be using a base station uh, or cellular correction for that. When you have a wireless data link, all of your signals can be shared online between the robots and even different vehicles with, with other sensor systems in it. Uh, the wireless data link also has very low latency. 
It's a very fast control method. As far as controlling the, the robots, there are many pre-written tests for all the SAE uh, tests that are out there or anything that's run pretty commonly. So this would come with the robot. Very easy to run these. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see just the start button and all the predefined angles that this particular test was going to steer to. But you're also able to go back into the scripting. So on the bottom right, you can see some of the Python commands there. So you can modify this just by opening up that, that control. You can also get immediate feedback with the vehicle system. So you can see right away, you can have a graph pop up and see whether or not the vehicle did what you needed it to. So in summary, we reviewed Kistler as a whole, our new wireless wheel force sensors for durability testing, and also steering and pedal robots and how they're used with durability. So thank you for your attention today. If any of these systems sparked your interest, uh, we do have a live demo October 27th. It'll be from 11 to 2. You're welcome to stop by and see these in person. Um, hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thank you so much for that great presentation. And now let's get to the Q&A. We do have some questions that have come in from the attendees, so we're going to move into answering those in a moment. If we don't get your question, don't worry. We will have an answer for you following the webinar. And if you haven't submitted your question yet, you can still do so now by entering it in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. Okay, now for our first question from the audience. How reliable is the wheel force transducer signal? Guy? Yeah, the wheel force transducer signal is really reliable. Um, it's because of also of our buffer. And um, it's always possible to have the last signal available. And also, you can trigger it with the status. If you, if you see something is going wrong, you have a buffer, and you see the point where, it, uh, where something maybe happened or where you have an interruption. Excellent. Thank you for that. And moving on to the next question from the audience. Um, okay, how do we go about scheduling demos? For the, uh, this is Eric Peterson. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, for demos, we love to do demos. We have uh, stock available out of our Novi office, uh, and we also have uh, leverage and, and stock out of Sindelfing in Germany. So we are pretty much available to handle demo requests. Just contact Mike or I. Mike or myself, and we'll be able to work with you to get something started. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay. And I just want to remind the audience, we are in the Q&A session. We have our experts from Kistler online and ready to answer you. So please send us your questions. Okay. Next question from the audience. Do we need specially modified wheels for a force transducer? Yep. So. Kistler provides the rims with the wheel force transducers, um, so it would be a specialized rim with a bolt pattern around the uh, outside of the rim. Um, we have all of these tested the SAE standards um, to last a, a what's considered an infinite uh, durability life, uh, so I would expect those to last in a lab for, for 10 or more years. Um, but yes, they are, are specialized wheels uh, that are used with the wheel force transducer. Great, thank you for that. Okay, and next question from the audience. Uh, what are the competitive advantages of your robot systems? Yep, so the biggest advantage would be the quick installation. Um, so when installing the steering robot, it's less than 30 minutes, even if it's just the, the second time doing it. Um, and you don't have to modify the existing vehicle. Uh, so you maintain that real feel if you need to take over and drive the car yourself. Um, there's nothing in between you and the existing steering wheel. Um, you still have the, the, all the exact controls intact. 
Um, you can also record and replay any of the, the maneuvers that you want to drive. Um, and then as far as the interface with it, it's really intuitive. Um, you can access it from any computer just with the IP address of the unit. Um, and just a really easy system to use. Excellent. Thank you for that. And while we're waiting uh, for some more questions to come in and we're looking at the ones here, uh, I just want to remind the audience that um, the entire webinar that was hosted today will be available uh, as a replay starting about an hour after this event ends. It will be available to you for the next 90 days. So you can come back and watch this again. Okay, and we'll give it a couple more seconds for any new questions that might come in, but that might have been the last one. And I think it was. All right, so well, thank you guys uh, for the great presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, we had something that just slid in here, so let's get that out. Okay, this is a follow-up um, from the first question, do we need specially modified wheels for force transducer? And we have two questions. Um, I would change my question on transducer. The unit is mount and unmountable from one size wheel to the other sizes. And that's a question. You guys want to see it in the queue? It's the top question. Yep. So because it is a bolt pattern around the outside of the rim, um, you can exchange the rims or the offset adapters that would match up to different wheel sizes. So we can go anywhere from, uh, I believe it's a 14-inch rim up to we've made 24-inch rims before, um, all using the same exact wheel force transducer. You just keep the same flange and bolt pattern on the rim and exchange the, the sensors and offset adapters in between them. Excellent. Thank you for that. And thank you to the audience member for following up. We do appreciate it. Okay, and that was our last question for today. So, again, thanks, guys, uh, for that great presentation and also taking the time to answer a few questions from the audience. I'd like to also thank our audience members for being part of this webinar event. You will be receiving an email from us for the link to the on-demand version. So, as mentioned, you can come back and watch this again. And lastly, please take a moment to complete a survey, which will appear on your screen at the end of this live webinar. For on-demand viewers, you will find the survey located along the bottom of your attendee console in the survey widget. Again, thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar event. Take care, and we'll talk with you soon.